watching Beyond World is One with me, Raisha Segal, and this is Speed News. We're getting the latest from all across the globe in just a matter of 30 odd minutes. Let's get you started. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump said that North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, a wealthy former software company executive, will be his pick for Interior Secretary. Trump also announced that he has selected Robert F. Kennedy Jr., an environmental activist, to lead the Department of Health and Human Services. The United States top health agency, Kennedy, who accepted the offer, has been one of the nation's most prominent anti-vaccine conspiracy theorist. He's a skeptic. In a statement, Kennedy emphasized the importance of riding the Department of Corruption and vowed to provide Americans with transparency so that they can make their own health decisions. At least 12 people have been killed in an Israeli strike in Lebanon's Baalbek. The strike targeted the main civil defense facility in the area, with eight personnel being among the dead. This was the second Israeli attack on a health emergency facility in less than two hours, after an earlier attack which killed Hezbollah-affiliated rescuers. Palestinian supporters gathered near the stadium where France competed against Israel in a Nations League soccer match held under high security. Several hundred people demonstrated in St. Denis against the match and announced France for hosting the game and supporting Israel. Crowds chanted, Free, Free Palestine, as police and security were ramped up near the venue a week after violence erupted in Amsterdam in connection with an Israeli club team's visit. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has ordered mass production of suicide drones as concerns mount of the country's deepening military cooperation with Russia. Kim Jong-un said that competition for using such drones for military purposes is accelerating around the world with military authorities likely to recognize their success in conflicts. He was quoted to have said that the introduction of such drones around the world requires an urgent update of military theory. Chinese President Xi Jinping and his Peruvian counterpart Dina Boluarte officially inaugurated the Changke Megaport at an event in the Peruvian capital Lima. The pair attended the opening ceremony of the $1.3 billion majority Chinese-owned facility that sits north of Lima through video link from the government palace in central Lima. The Peruvian government hopes that the port will become a strategic transshipment hub for the region, opening a new line connecting South America to Asia and speeding trade across the Pacific. Hundreds of Peruvians demonstrated on the streets of Lima against the government and its failure to tackle rising crime as world leaders arrived in the Andean country for the Asia-Pacific Economic Summit. A group of demonstrators were seen hurling plastic bottles and water at police bus. It was latest in a string of street demonstrations and union strikes over a recent eruption of violent attacks and extortion that has paralyzed the Peruvian capital in recent weeks.
Sri Lankans handed Anura Kumar Desanayake a thumping win in the snap elections, giving its new leftist president greater legislative power to pursue policies to eradicate poverty and fight graft as the country recovers from a financial meltdown. The NPP won 100 the NPP won 123 seats, securing 62% or 6.8 million votes in Thursday's election, putting them past the majority mark in the parliament, which is the bare minimum of 130. India's Home Ministry has reimposed the Armed Forces Special Powers Act in five districts of the state of Manipur. It has declared six police station limits as disturbed areas amid ongoing ethnic violence in the state. The special legislation allows the Army and the Assam Rifles to conduct operations without waiting for the arrival of a magistrate and the state police. The fresh order will be in place till 31st March next year. India's Minister of External Affairs says it will pursue extradition of Khalistani terrorist Ash Singh Gill, also known as Ash Dalla, who has reportedly been arrested in Ontario. Ash Dalla, who was designated as a terrorist in 2023, is wanted in over 50 cases of murder, extortion and terrorist acts by India. An aide of slain Khalistan terrorist Hardeep Singh Mijjar, Ash Dalla is among 27 individuals who whose extradition had been sought by India. Tropical storm Sarah dumped heavy rains with the potential to cause disastrous flooding as it churned inland along the northeastern coast of Honduras. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said Storm Sarah would bring life-threatening and potentially catastrophic flash flooding and mudslides through the weekend. The Honduran Emergency Management Agency has put four Caribbean departments on red alert for 72 hours, urging evacuations from danger zones. President Xiomaro Castro said emergency services had been activated to deal with damage already caused by the rains. Further warning that Sarah's impacts could become a catastrophic event. India's national capital continues to remain in the severe category for the consecutive day with a thick layer of smog engulfing the region and trapping the toxic K gases. The Commission for Air Quality Management has imposed GRAP Stage 3 in Delhi NCR from today in a bit to curb pollution in the national capital region. This means that all non-essential construction demolition activities in polluting industries will be halted while BS3 petrol and BS4 diesel vehicles will be restricted. Futuristic concept aircraft taking center stage at the 15th China International Aviation and Aerospace Exhibition, wooing visitors with uh, sleek sci-fi sci inspired designs. Among the highlight is the Baby White Emperor Type B, a stealth aerospace fighter replica stretching 22 meters, impressing attendees with its streamlined camouflage look. Also turning heads is uh, Huang Gong or Cold Light, a vertical takeoff and landing craft. Its dual wing ring tail design is meant for operations in low gravity environments like the moon or the mars.
researchers in South Korea have created a first of its kind wheel that changes shape to adapt to the environment. On the smooth ground, it stays firm for stability, but when faced with obstacles, it flexes to easily help navigate. The team envisions this adaptable tech of finding uses beyond wheelchairs from mobility aids to industrial robots. OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, is reportedly making an advanced AI assistant known internally as operator that could handle tasks directly on your computer. This assistant is expected to help with activities like writing code, booking travel and performing other automated tasks, especially through a web browser. Microsoft-backed OpenAI is just one of several companies advancing in this area just last month. And Tropic added similar functionality to its Claude AI model, allowing users to automate various tasks. Reportedly, Google is also working on a project nicknamed Jarvis. Jarvis aims to take on web-based tasks like conducting research and booking flights. According to sources, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission is set to investigate Microsoft's cloud computing business over alleged anti-competitive practices. Reports indicate that the investigation will focus on claims that Microsoft is using its dominant position in productivity software to hinder customers from switching from its Azure cloud service to computing platforms allegedly. Microsoft's tactics include raising subscription fees for departing customers, charges high exit fees and making its Office 365 software less compatible with other cloud services. It was weather, including severe flooding in Spain, Valencia and in the Alenquet regions in October, has triggered a predicted $4.2 billion in insured losses. In a bit to replenish the government reserves, insurance premiums are expected to rise. The overall damage is estimated at over $10 billion, with the Bank of Spain noting that regional bank loan exposure is around $21 billion. The government has allocated some amount for relief efforts and Spanish banks are offering loan moratoriums on approximately 150,000 mortgages. This would allow clients to defer payments for three months and pay interest only for an additional nine months. Oil prices dipped slightly on Friday, driven by oversupply concerns and demand challenges as a strong dollar weighed on the market. Brent crude fell to $72,026 per barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate slipped to $68.45, setting both for a weekly decline despite a larger than expected 2.1 million barrel rise in U.S. crude inventories. Gasoline and uh, other stocks fell sharply, indicating stronger demand. The International Energy Agency predicts supply will outpace demand by 2025. With rising output from the US and non-OPEC nations, despite production cuts from OPEC+, Plus, OPEC recently lowered its demand growth forecast due to weakness in major markets like China.
U.S. producer prices rise in October, signaling persistent inflation driven by increased costs in services such as portfolio management and airline fares. This follows minimal change in consumer inflation, raising expectations that the Fed may slow the pace of rate cuts in 2025. Fed Chair Jerome Powell noted that economic data could justify a more gradual reduction and markets suggested their rate cut odds accordingly. The producer price index climbed 0.2% last month with notable gains in healthcare, wholesale vehicle and cable services. Meanwhile, jobless claims fell to a six-month low, hinting that the recent job growth dip might have been temporary. China's retail sales rise in October, growing 4.8% year-on-year, the fastest pace since February. This comes as recent measures aimed at strengthening consumer spending appears to take effect. This uptick outpaced forecast and comes as the government works to counteract economic headwinds such as weak domestic demand, a struggling property sector and global trade tensions. Meanwhile, urban unemployment slightly declined to 5% though industrial production growth dipped to 5.3%. To support its 5% growth target, Beijing has rolled out initiatives including debt swaps, mortgage rate cuts and relaxed home buying restrictions. This marks some of the country's most strong economic interventions in years.